another amazing Creatures of the World show. We're very happy to have you here today. Alright, so tell me, who's ready to see some animals? <laughs> All right, well, since you guys are ready, why don't we start the show with a competition? All right, bring out the contender. Okay, so we have the African Grace. On your right hand side, we have Oscar, together with trainer Julian. And then on your left hand side, we have Michael, together with trainer Cash. Now, this time, let's see who will segregate this rubbish faster, okay? But since this is a competition, before we start, can we give Michael a round of applause, please? There you go! Well, how about on this side, let's give Oscar a big hand! Yeah! Okay, well then, ready? Set! Go! protecting them now by not buying from illegal pet trade. All right? So everybody have another round of applause for our African Grace. Come on. Okay. Well, you know what? It's not just the African Grace who are facing all these threats in the wild. There's still a lot of them. But lucky you, you're going to meet some of them today. First off, why don't we start with the Utter. <laughs> against illegal pet trade. Now why is that so? Well these animals they are being taken as pups or babies for use as pets and attractions mainly because they are the smallest species of otters. In fact they are being used as domestic pets for otter cafes or in wild otters are interacting with paying customers. But you know what otters they cannot just stay on land alone because they are semi-aquatic mammals. So that means that they live both on land and in water. But they spend most of their time in the water searching for food since their diet comprises a lot of fish and shellfish. Now you see otters are very good divers and also very amazing runners on land as well. Alright, let's wait for Bruce to go to his trainer. Alright, now Bruce, can you show us some tricks? Here you go, a high five. Everybody, how about a big hand for Bruce? Come on. Alright, now just a kind of reminder for everybody, please have your children seated. Thank you so much. This is for your kids' safety and for our animal safety as well. Alright, now this time let's call on stage another set of flying birds. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here comes the horn business. Dimorphic. 
And that means that you can easily tell which one is a male or a female just by looking at their physical appearance. Now just by judging by their looks, who do you think is the male and who is the female? Anyone? Yes? This one is the male? Yeah? This one is the female and the other one is the male. That is correct. The one with all black feather is our female Papuan hornbill and the one with white head is our male Papuan hornbill. Alright, you know what, aside from Papua New Guinea, these birds are also endemic in Eastern Indonesia, Australia, and even as far as Solomon Islands. Well, I don't know if you guys can see, but actually, if you will try to look closer, you will see that hornbills, they have eyelashes. Can you see their eyelashes? Yeah, they're very long and very prominent, right? Oh, they use those eyelashes to protect their eyes from dust and debris. There you go, everybody have a round of applause for our Papua and Hornbill. There we go. Okay, now this next animal that we are going to have, you know what, a lot of people mistake them as pigs because of their round and stout body. But they're not pigs. They're big with quills on their backs. Do you guys have an idea who they are? Okay, I'll give you a hint. The first letter starts with the letter P. Penguin? Porcupine, that's right. Come on out. Indian crested porcupines, the third largest rodents in the world. You now, porcupines' best defense skill are those quills that they have on their backs. But in contrary to what most people believe in, or just like what we see in the movie, well, they cannot spring them out or shoot them to their enemies. They don't do that. Rather, when they feel threats, and what they're going to do is they will run backwards really fast and they will leave those quills in their enemies' face, skin, and mouth. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I will bring you up Come on. All right, now let's move on. You know what? Some animals are just so clever that if they cannot find food in their natural habitat, they have learned a new way to survive. Just like this next animal. Well, we have the recruits on stage this afternoon. All right, let's go, guys. Now, as you can see, the rubbish bins are the recruits' favorite. As I've said, these animals are just so clever, right? Well, you know what? They have learned that their food doesn't have to move around, you know, like frogs or rodents. So what do they do is they just wait for us humans to throw our rubbish. That's why a lot of people don't like them because they make a mess out of everything. But all right, now can you see what he's doing right now? There's actually water inside that container. You know what, one positive thing about raccoons is that whenever they find food in the wild and they think it's too dirty, what they will do is they will wash it first before they will actually eat it. That's why in some countries they're also called as the washing bears. Interesting, right? Everybody have a big hand for our raccoons. Come on! Alright, seems like he's enjoying his afternoon meal. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much, buddy. There you go. Okay, now for this next segment, we are going to go big. And when I say big, I meant the world's heaviest flying birds. Do you have any idea who they are? They're huge, they're white, and they love fish. Okay, now, as I said, these are the world's heaviest flying birds. Now, pelicans, they're very famous for the large pouch under their bill. Can you guys see this pouch? The big one? That is what we call ruler pouch. You know, many people mistakenly believe that they use that pouch to store food. You know, like a built-in lunchbox. But that is not true, don't believe that. They use that as a fishing net. And what they will do is they will scoop up the fish in the water, just like so. And voila, they have their meal for the day. Well, pelicans, they're opportunistic feeders, and that means that they feed on anything available. But if their natural habitat cannot support their daily needs, they have learned to go to fish farms and steal. Again, very clever, right? Okay, everybody, if you love our pelicans, let's give them a big hand. Thank you so much, guys. All right, do you want to see more? Do you want to see more animals? Yeah! Yeah! Okay, 
Okay, now I have a question for you first, okay? What word is that at the back? Anyone? Carrot. What? Carrot. That is correct. Now we often see these birds inside pet shops, right? But, yeah. But do you guys know that they're very good flyers? Check this out. conservation centers and even safari parks we get to learn more about their natural behaviors just like this next one next one that we are about to show you let's all welcome on stage our kuwati let's go all right everybody these are this is the kuwati or also known as kuwati mundis well he is tree climbing mammal now as you can see he has very sharp claws to help them climb trees and also they have this long tail to help them keep in balance. Now they are omnivores and they eat almost all kind of fruits. Right now I'm feeding him banana and mangoes, but they also eat small insects and small mammals. Now I don't know if you guys actually see, but actually if you will try to look closer, you will see that Kuwati Mudis, they have a pig-like snout that they can rotate for up to 60 degrees to help them find food that is on the ground. And just like their raccoon relatives, well, these animals are very creative and resourceful. Right, Bencho? There you go. Okay. So with that, everybody, have a round of applause for our Karate Monty! Keeping a wild animal as a pet is associated with a lot of potential problems. So, instead of having a wild animal, why don't we settle for the man's best friend? Now, who's the man's best friend? The dog. The dog. That's right. Like that. Oh my god. Well, you know what? Having the dog as a pet will give you a great companionship and a half a life. Watch this.
Come on, say goodbye to our friends. Bye!